okay, gonna do a video, another video, in response to the heresies of Jack Smack 77 on John 3.16, saying that all you need is John 3.16, people are going to hell if you say that John 3.16 is not enough to be saved, and this is the mess you get yourself into when you're non-dispensational. You don't compare scripture with scripture, as commanded in 1 Corinthians 2.13. You're supposed to compare spiritual with spiritual. And he doesn't do that. He just bases his whole doctrine on one verse. That's not what Bible-believing Christians do. Bible-believing Christians, we don't base doctrine off one verse. That's what cults do. That's what the Roman Catholic cult does. That's what other cults will do, too. Base doctrine off one verse. Okay? Bible-believing Christians, we compare scripture with scripture. That's how it goes. So, let's get into uh, responding to his heresies. That all you need is John 3.16 and that you're going to hell if you say that John 3.16 is not enough. I mean, it's insanity. Let's get right into this. Now the Bible's very clear on how to be saved. And let's go ahead and just turn over to John chapter 3 and look at verse 16. The reason I'm preaching this sermon is because I'm just fed up with all these false prophets out there rejecting the word of God, making it evident that they're not saved. And John 3.16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And this is the common error that he gets himself into. He takes John 3.16 and says, everything you need is in there. Now, there are essential details to the gospel that are not in John 3.16. They're not in there. Okay? For example, details about salvation not being by works are not in John 3.16. But they are in Romans chapter 3, verse 26 to 28, Romans 11.6, Romans 4, 4 to 6, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and Titus 3, 5, among other scriptures. So again, when you're looking for the gospel, you're not just basing it on one verse. You're comparing verses with other verses. You take John 3.16 about, you know, obviously God uh, sent his son to die for your sins, but you're not saved by your works. So you turn to Ephesians 2.89. You compare scripture with scripture. You, this thing of oh, we one verse, we need one verse. Uh, that's, again, that's what cults do. That's what the Roman Catholic cult does. That's what other cults would do. This is not, this is not a scriptural practice. So let's continue. Now, anyone in their right mind would not believe that, that this is not enough to be saved when having everlasting life and the promise of never perishing is tantamount to being saved. And, and again, there are details in other verses. Again, where's repentance? Where's the, any mention of repentance in John 3.16? There's not. But there is repentance in other scriptures, like 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8-11. to 11. There is repentance there. So, again, you go to John 3.16, obviously John 3.16 can be part of your salvation message. I've never denied that. I'm not saying that John 3.16, you just cut that out of your Bible. No, you keep that part of your salvation message, but you don't base your whole gospel off that one verse. You use John 3.16, but you also take verses about repentance. Again, like 2 Corinthians 7, 8-11. to 11. Where's the repentance? Where is the God that serve for your sins? Where is repentance towards God and faith toward Jesus Christ? It's not in there. So you're looking for other verses. You go through the plan of salvation through scriptures. You don't just say, okay, one verse, that's it, you're saved. No. The gospel plan of salvation is not not confined to one verse. Again, cultism, the thing of basing doctrine off of one verse. And there's no repentance. This is a completely repentanceless, false gospel. So let's continue. And people that teach this garbage, these dispensationalists or hyper-dispensationalists or whoever they are, these people don't believe the Bible. They don't believe the clear word of God. Now, a lot of people will argue and say, well, these people do believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but if you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ without the promise of John 3.16, then you're no different than, than every Catholic out there. You know? um, he just contradicted himself. So you have to believe the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ but there's no mention of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in John 3.16. It just says that God still loved the world. He sent his, sent his only begotten Son to visit die for your sins. Paraphrasing, of course. But you have to believe the death, burial, and resurrection of, John, of, of Jesus Christ. But then John 3.16 is all you need. But then there's no mention of that in John 3.16. He just contradicted himself. You know? And again, the resurrection, death, burial, and resurrection. Again, there's no mention of that in John 3.16. But there is details about it in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through, 1 through 4, where the gospel is defined. So again, you're, you're not just looking for one verse. You're comparing scripture with scripture. You're going through scriptures, you know, whereas, you know, for all of sin to come short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 23, Romans 3, 10, you know, for there's none righteous, no, not one. Where is that in John 3, 16? So I guess we should not tell people they're sinners and they need a savior because all we need is John 3, 16. Again, faulty, faulty uh, reasoning and logic, okay? John 3.16 is part of the gospel, but you don't 
you don't, you don't just only use John 3.16, you use other scriptures. Again, these non-dispensational heretics like this can't see that. This, this immature, uh, childish kid, Jack Smack 7.7, 7, he can't see that. So, let's continue. You're no different than every you know, false prophet in every false religion out there. Because believing that alone it does not even tell you how to be saved. Okay, and my contention is that if people don't believe the simple promise of John 3.16, or that John 3.16 is enough, then they don't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, their faith is in vain, and it, it's, it's just foolishness. <clears throat> now, people that don't believe in John 3.16 as being enough to be saved, these people are spiritually blind. They don't understand what the Word of God says. And again, where is there any mention of the death, burial, and resurrection in John 3.16? There's no mention of it. So when you're looking for the gospel, you use John 3.16, but you use other scriptures too. So just, I was repeating myself, but again, this is a heresy. Saying, oh, you just need one verse, one verse. No, it's cultic. They just use one verse to base your whole doctrine off. Catholics will base their whole uh, Romanist cult, their whole Catholic cult, off Matthew 16.18. They'll base their whole mass, their pagan, unbloody, cannibalistic mass, off of John 6.54. They'll never look at the context or compare scripture with scripture. So, the thing about one verse, we need one verse, that's it. No, it's not a scriptural practice. It's a cultic pagan practice. It's what Catholics do. It's what other cultists do. So, don't be deceived by this anti-repentance uh, heresy. And again, I say easy believism is a heresy, but again, salvation is easy. I don't deny that. Grace is a free gift, according to Romans chapter 5, verse 15 and 18. Grace is a free gift. I don't deny that. I am free grace in that sense, because grace is a free gift from God. If it's, a, if it's a gift, it means you don't have to earn it by works, okay? When I say easy believism, I, I'm saying what this guy believes, as in there's no repentance, there's no godly sorrow, it's just, you know, believe and that's it. It's heresy, okay? Repentance is not found in John 3, 16, okay? You compare scripture with scripture, like I said before. So don't be deceived by this heresy that only oh, just one verse, one verse. No, it's not scriptural. You compare scripture with scripture. You go through the, the Gospels, you go through the Gospel of John, you go through... The Romans, the book, of, the book of Romans, verses like Romans 3.23, Romans 3.10, for all sin and come short with the glory of God, you show them they're a sinner. You bring them to the point of basically their self-righteousness is broken, they're realizing they're a sinner, they repent, God this our work with repentance to salvation, 2 Corinthians 7.10, and then they'll believe, and then they'll call upon the name of the Lord, Romans 10.9-13. Again, we're just calling upon the name of the Lord in, in John 3.16. It's not in there. So... Don't believe this heresy. Don't be deceived by it. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.